In the aftermath of the Soviet occupation, Afghanistan needed a stable government. A religious group called the Taliban took control over most of the country. At first, people seemed happy with the new government and the country appeared to be stable. But then the Taliban imposed restrictions which included a complete ban on women working outside the home and girls from going to school. Lack of education led to the current 88% illiteracy rate among Afghan females. Two United States diplomats, Greg Mortensen and Dina Fessler, recognized the need for education among Afghan women. Their nonprofit organizations are working to help the illiterate population in Afghanistan. Afghanistan is a mountainous and dry region. Because of the terrain, travel is difficult. The people of Afghanistan are divided into clans and ethnic groups based on their geographical region. Historically, women have been important in the Afghan culture. Women helped to draft the 1964 Constitution. In the 1970s, there were at least three women legislators in the parliament. Up to the early 1990s, women were teachers, government workers, and medical doctors. They worked as professors, lawyers, judges, journalists, writers, and poets. In the 1970s, the Soviet Union attempted to take control of Afghanistan. Under Soviet control, women were encouraged to stop wearing veils. They were allowed to learn and work outside the home. The Soviet takeover was met with resistance once they attempted to increase their territory. Hundreds of millions of dollars in aid were sent to Afghanistan to support the Mujahideen and refugees. With no victory in sight, in 1989, Soviet leader Gorbachev decided the Soviets must get out and they withdrew from Afghanistan. For 10 years, between 79 and 89, there was a you know war going on and having outside invading forces coming in, um, killing large you know, segments of the population, destroying the infrastructure, really breaking down that infrastructure. I think that was probably one of the most significant things that they did because it's like when you, you know, when you stumble, it's hard to regain your footing and Afghanistan has not been able to regain their footing since that time. So I think the Soviet Union is sort of the first ent outside entity to really weaken the Afghan infrastructure. The war had a long-lasting impact on the people of Afghanistan. Several million fled to Pakistan or became internal refugees. Millions died of starvation or Soviet bombings and raids. People who survived were a generation who only knew war, hatred, and fear. After the Soviet withdrawal, the Afghan people desperately needed a stable government. The Taliban offered stability along with a strong religious foundation. Uh, the Taliban came in as an outside force from Pakistan and they stabilized things. They really did and the people originally were very happy about that because everything became very calm and all the violence stopped. Initially it seemed that Afghanistan would once again be stable. However, immediately after taking control of cities and communities, the Taliban imposed its law based on an interpretation of Islamic law that was stricter than in any part of the Islamic world. The Taliban imposed strict laws on the freedom of Afghan women, including closing all schools for girls. During the Taliban's rule, only about 3% of girls received some form of primary education. The ban also impacted boys' education as the majority of teachers had been women. This led to the opening of more madrasas or strict religious schools. Many Afghani parents were not happy that their boys were attending madrasas, but the leaders also provided families with shelter, food, and medicine, so it was hard to argue. 
During the 1990s, about 80,000 boys who had been educated in madrasas became part of the Taliban. Even though the Taliban outlawed school for girls, underground schools blossomed. As many as 45,000 girls attended these secret schools in Kabul before the fall of the Taliban. Even with these secret schools, education for women suffered under Taliban rule. At the end of the Soviet occupation, about 32% of Afghan girls attended school. By the end of the Taliban era in 2001, only about 6% of girls attended school. One person's failed mission years earlier led to hope for education in Afghanistan. To honor his sister's memory, in 1993, Greg Mortensen climbed Pakistan's K2. While recovering from the failed attempt to climb the mountain in a village called Korfe, he met a group of children sitting in the dirt riding with sticks in the sand and made a promise to help them build a school. From that promise drew a diplomatic campaign that expanded from Pakistan to Afghanistan in 2001. Greg Mortensen has dedicated his life to promote education, especially for girls, in remote regions of Pakistan and Afghanistan. In 1996, he founded Central Asia Institute. Their slogan is, Peace and hope begins with education, one child at a time. He has had many successes and failures along the way. When asked if he considers himself a diplomat, his mother responded, uh, He probably doesn't. He considers himself a regular guy who saw a need. On his bathroom mirror, he has written, When your heart speaks, take good notes, and his heart spoken, he's doing it. But I don't think he sees himself as a diplomat. Mortensen's new book, Stones into Schools, Promoting Peace with Books, Not Bombs, was released on December 1st, 2009. As word of his diplomatic effort has spread throughout the region, Mortensen has experienced much success in his mission to educate students. There are 170 schools, but some villages don't want a building because they don't want to attract Taliban because of a girls' school, so they're learning in, in homes. But uh, 170 schools, 143 buildings, 68,000 children, and about 50,000 are girls. Another person's quest for educating children in the United States about different cultures landed her in a diplomatic role in Afghanistan more recently. Dina Fessler's passion for helping children of the world learn from and relate to one another is what led to the creation of her nonprofit organization, Children's Culture Connections. We, we came across a group that is living in an IDP camp and IDPs are internally displaced people. They're very similar to refugees, where violence in the area that they live in within Afghanistan was so bad that they had to leave their homes and now they're currently living outside of Kabul, the capital, in a very makeshift day-to-day um, -day existence of you know, mud homes, There's, they're jobless. Um, the group of people are also mostly illiterate uh, their, the overcrowding in the city makes it hard to compete for jobs and their level of illiteracy and lack of understanding in the outside world, outside of the little area that they came from, is leaving them with almost no options. No options that are good. Um, what we're doing is trying to reach some of the younger people within this camp to help them start to learn to read and write and start to help them communicate with and see the outside world enough to realize some new possibilities for their life with our support. The debate of illiteracy in Afghanistan is not new. Thanks to diplomatic efforts of average people, 
while Afghani students have access to education.